right. Wait, notification. Perfect. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have an incredible guest with us tonight, one who is going to give us some amazing information as well as inspiration, and that is none other than our brother, Brother Craig. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, God. How you doing, beloved? I'm doing phenomenal, sir. Uh, I want to uh, thank you very much on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience for taking time to come on the People's Podcast and let us uh, hear about your journey and your testimony. The first question that we have for you, sir, is when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Yes, sir. Thank you for that question, beloved. When I first heard the teachings, I was in high school and I saw the minister on TV, uh, you know, representing the um, Reverend Jesse Jackson. He was running for president in 1984. Mm. And when I, when I heard that brother speak, man, I said, my God, <laughs> who is this man's God? Because <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I've never seen a black man talk like that before in my life. And so I, that's that's what got my attention, just hearing him speaking. I saw the brother standing around him, you know, all militant and militarily and soldiers. I said, oh, man, I got to find out more about this. So I asked my mother, I said, Ma, who is this man? She said, oh, that's that's Minister Louis Farrakhan. She said, we used mm -hmm. to listen to him all the time when we were in Newark, New Jersey, because we used to live in Newark. I was born in Newark, but we moved down south back to Conway when my parents divorced. And uh, after she told me that, man, I started just looking up the, the minister in the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I read a book one time when I was at a lifeguard at the um, city swimming pool. And in that book, it had a historical uh, history of all of the black people of, of importance in our history. And in that book, it had Elijah, Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Mm. And it talked about how he met this man named Fard Muhammad, mm. whom we now call Fard Muhammad. And he talked about uh, how that man taught him about God and the devil in America and black folk. And, and I said, man, that's interesting. So I never made that connection until I heard the minister teaching about Elijah Muhammad. Mm. And I said to myself, man, if, if Farrakhan, if Minister Farrakhan is connected to that man far, because one thing in that book that struck me is when uh, it said that he taught Elijah Muhammad for three and a half years and then he left and went away. So that stayed with me. I said, man, who is this man? I wonder if that man was God. <laughs> I mean, I mean, mm -hmm. I was thinking this. And so when I heard the minister, I was thinking that when he, when he mentioned Elijah Muhammad's name, I said, okay, I wonder if they connected to Farad Muhammad. Mm -hmm. And after I kept listening to the minister talk about that, that connection was made. I said, you know what? I got to get, I got to become a part of this. I got to. So when I went to a college at South Carolina State University, I happened to see some FYI on the yard. I was playing football, so I, you know, when you're playing football in college, it's like a job. <laughs> so you don't have much time to be out amongst the student body. But I saw the brothers walking around. It was sharp, crisp, and clean. Brother Tyrone Muhammad down there in Atlanta. He was one of the brothers uh, mm -hmm. that I saw. A brother tall and stacturous back then, and uh, very youthful. And I saw those brothers. I was very impressed with them. And then uh, I saw Dr. Lean. He came down on the yard. Uh, they invited him in, and I, I, I was, uh, I couldn't help but I had to go, I had to go check him out. And I was pledging at the time, and I tried to stick around a little longer than I was supposed to, and got whipped because <laughs> I didn't want to leave, you know. And then I, then that, that carried me into the following year. Uh, they didn't have a, 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 you know, any movement on the yard at that time, but I saw a brother, Amin Muhammad, who was brother Kendall at the time, mm. who's, who's in Chicago now, walking around the campus. And so I, bought, I said, come on, let me go meet this brother. It was another brother, brother Marcus at the time, Marcus Bellinger, who eventually became Marcus X Bellinger. We was together. I said, let's go talk to this brother, man. That's one of them Firecon brothers, you know? <laughs> and so when I met brother uh, Kendall, brother me now, and started talking to him, I said, look, man, how can I join? He said, man, you just met me. You ready to join already? I said, brother, I'm ready. I said, you said, my brother, just let's, let's learn a little bit more about it, and then we can talk. He said, look, man, I want to start a study, a study group on the campus. Mm. He said, can you help me with that? I said, sure, I can help you with that. We can get that done quickly. <laughs> so we started a study group on the campus of SC State at that time. And Brother Me would come in and, and teach us on the uh, self-improvement study guides, man. And, uh, and from there, the rest is history. The rest is history, brother. 
All uh, praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. My sister Naima says, I'm like, Lake Salah Naima. Thank you, everyone who's watching. And we can't wait to put this on YouTube. Okay. So, were you in college with Brother Aaron at the same time or no? They came a, a year, two years after I graduated, but I always came back to check on them because the minister told me to look out for his son, him and Mustafa, the Supreme, and look out for my little brother. So I was coming back and forth to, to check on them. In fact, um, when, the, when he brought the brother Aaron and, and, Mus and uh, Abner, when he brought Abner down, brother Curtis, which was my captain at the time in Columbia, had me and brother Marcus make sure we come and meet the minister there on the campus with Ab. And uh, Abner is a friend, a personal friend of mine while, while we're talking about that. So that's how we became friends. And I met, I met Ab, met the minister personally. Your father was our regional captain. Your father, man, I just love that brother, man. He talked so much, just listening to him, watch how he moved. And the minister told all the security team around him, let those two brothers, which was me and brother Marcus, go wherever I go today. They with me all day long. Don't bother them, leave them alone. They, they, I don't care where I am, they're with me. So we was walking around, you know, <laughs> the team like we belong there, you know. Yes, sir. And they was letting yes, us sir. have our way with the minister. He told them not to touch us, not to bother us. Wherever he went, we went. And uh, man, that was then. That's how I met Ab at the time. And he told me that day. He said, "Brother, look out for my son." You know, mm, and uh, mm. I, I was still. I still had a lot of pull on the yard because I was. I was just there, and I was a very popular omega. And so I had brothers who were looking out for brother and, and making sure he wasn't getting into anything. But at the time, man, it was it was just a beautiful day. I spent the whole day with the minister and his, and his wife, Mother Khadija. Mother Mustafa and the security team, and, and it just uh, that's my first experience meeting the minister face to face, and having have we had dinner and just talking to him, man, I just felt like I was in the presence of the Messiah. Then, you know, nobody had to teach me who the minister was. I knew that right away before I came in the nation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nobody had to teach me that he was the Messiah. To me, he was already that, so I knew who I was looking at. Oh, President Tola, yes, sir. Well, let's let's go back to the. Um... Being on the yard, what made you not choose to be a Kappa and or an Alpha or a Sigma? What made you choose Omega Sci Fi? Well, first, you know, my father is an Omega. My oldest brother is an Omega. My mother is a Delta. So I grew up in the house purple and gold and, and red and white. But what I loved about the fraternity was that the cardinal principles, and one of the first cardinal principles is manhood. You know, then there's, then there's scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. So just, just being those principles, I already embodied them, I felt. So it was just a natural flow for me to become a part of that. But I'm more so of the Omega man type than the dog type, you know? And okay, yes, uh, we turn that around backwards, that's God. That's God. So um, you start out on all fours, but you gotta, you know, you gotta grow and elevate. So um, I, I, uh, I couldn't be nothing else but that. Crazy couldn't to be like, yes, sir. I remember, I remember asking you what you was gonna do years ago when we was in Atlanta at the um, at the uh, ten thousand fearless house. I said, "Brother John, what you gonna do, man?" <laughs> yes, sir. We work. We, 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 I'm in college, you know, so we're working on some things as we speak. You know, so we working okay. on some things up. All right. Yes, yes sir. sir. I, I, I wanted to ask you. My, my next question is: How did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teachings? I had no problem. No problem. I was I was already military, brother Josh. I was already military growing up. I always stood up for our people, even as a young boy, you know, I would stand up for our people. I would I would join the marches in our hometown because, you know, growing up in South Carolina, white supremacy is deep here. And, mm. um, you know, I've, I've been spat at as buses go by, I've been called nigger, rocks thrown at me. So I, that that militancy was already in me, you know, because I, I didn't I never liked being under the rule of white supremacy. And I would always challenge it wherever I was. So even as a child, so that, that was just a natural flow for me. So they understood that nobody, my mom was for it. My grandmother even liked the minister when she heard about throwing true Christian love, she fell in love with the minister after that. <laughs> Beautiful, That's all praise you to Allah, yes sir. Okay, I wanted to ask you about uh, the Million Man March. What was the climate like and how did that personally impact you? Oh, brother. We got there like four in the morning. And uh, by the time we got to the mall, it was about, it was looked like it was about 250,000 people already out there. And just seeing that sight, man, and, and the respect that the FOI had among the people, 
was just so awe-inspiring. And then when the sun rose that morning and you could see the people, a sea of black men all the way back towards the monument from where we were. I was like, man, tears was running out of my eyes. Tears was running down. You know, we hardcore up for a Tears was running down our eyes looking at this site, man. And we saw all the work that the minister and the fruit had been putting in for years and months leading up to that come to fruition. And it was such an overwhelming joy and on an overwhelming event, man, and all the peace that was out there. You can't get black men, you can't get 50 of us in one spot without a fight breaking out. But on that day, we had our about 2 million out there. Not one fight broke out, not one. You know, and brothers was lifting each other up, passing them over their head to get them to the bathroom, you know, to the, uh, the, the, the what do they call those things out there? They had porta-potties. Yes, out there, those porta-potties. It was just a beautiful day of brotherhood, brother. Just a beautiful day of brotherhood. I felt like, like the minister said, it, it was heaven. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be among us. We're supposed to be able to live in peace like that. We're supposed to be to be among each other without any friction. You know, just true brotherhood, true love amongst the brothers. Powerful. Yeah, that, yes, that sir. Me. That, it still impacts me to this day. Yeah. Just the memory of it impacts me to this day. Oh, praise due to a lot. Well, have you ever been faced with fear? And if so, how have you overcome that fear? You got you to challenge it. We always face with fear. I remember uh, just in 2015, to give you an example of that, when this young lady, this 15-year-old child was attacked by this deaf shepherd, the deaf, deputy sheriff here in Columbia at Spring Valley High School. Um, and he, I don't know if you saw that. You might have been too young then. It was in 2015. He, he body slammed her and threw her on the floor, <clears throat> threw her across the room because she was in a class, but she, she had her cell phone and the teacher wanted the cell phone. She didn't, she didn't want to give, she, went, she didn't talk on it, but she didn't want to give it up. So they called the, the sheriff deputy and he was called Officer Slam, big old strong looking white boy. And he, he grabbed her out of her seat and body slammed her through the floor, you know, on the floor and threw her across the room. And that went nationwide on the news. Um, so the following day <clears throat> at the school board meeting, they had a meeting to discuss that incident. And I noticed that all of the black men, most of them that came down to talk before the school board <clears throat> were very passive. You know, they was pretty much siding with the officer over the young lady who was body slammed. She was a 15 year old child. And uh, that day, I said to myself, one of the, the brothers who was with me said, man, you gonna have to say something because ain't nobody saying nothing about for this young lady. So I just asked Allah, Master Far Bahamun. And that's what I, I asked him personally to give me his words to say to the people <clears throat> and to the board and to the police officers. And uh, that went viral. That went all over the world. It had about 7 million views. I think uh, uh, Sean King picked it up. D.L. Hewley picked it up. A few other people picked it up and put it on their social media outlets and it went worldwide. And I got requests from every major news, news network to be interviewed and I turned them all down. <clears throat> it wasn't about me, it was about her. You know, and, um, and uh, that, but it, the, the fact that the, the thing about fear is when you go before these people, you know you got police officers in there, you got the school board in there, <clears throat> but you have to challenge your fear, brother. Yes, sir. You got you got to say what's right, what's true, regardless of the cost. And being in an FOI, I just asked myself the question: What would the minister do? You know, folks like to say, "What would Jesus do?" Well, that's mine. He's mine. So I said, "What would the minister do?" And so when I asked myself that question, I stepped to that mic with no fear and just began to speak. By the grace of Allah, the right words came out in the manner and spirit that it was supposed to come out and it was very effective. And they fired that officer the very next day. Mm. That's all crazy. Yes, sir. okay, so I'm familiar with the video. I didn't know that was you. Okay, see, I didn't, I didn't put that together. I didn't, <laughs> yes, sir. I didn't put that together. Yeah. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Okay, yes, sir. Okay, I gotta, uh, I would've shared the clip on you, if, on YouTube, I would've known that I'm looking for right now. I would've shared it on the, uh, on the interview so people can see it. Yes, sir, we gotta put oh, that yeah. up. Yes, sir. Wonderful. I'm glad that he was fired. All right. Excellent. Well, we have a quick 60 second commercial break for all of the all sponsors right. of People's Podcast, and then we're coming right back to our brother, Brother Craig. Yes, sir. Peace. And thank you very much. Here we go.
a camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of those services. This is Miriam's ABC I Love Me children's book and coloring book, and now Spanish book. All three available on Amazon.com. Sister Naima's Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country, right here in the studios of Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Kenneth's bow tie maker extraordinaire. He'll ship you bow ties anywhere across the nation. Dr. Henry Carter's King Henry Turkey Legs, right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Brother Rashad Muhammad's COVID-19 Disinfected Cleaning Services out of Chicago. Student Minister Sharif Muhammad's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, available on adulsharif.com. And lastly, Brother Joshua Muhammad's book, Cleopatra, as well as No Father, No Excuse, both available on Amazon. If you would like to donate or perfect, thank you for every like, share, and subscription. We're right back to our brother, brother Craig. My next question for you, sir, is what has been the greatest trial in your life, and how have you overcome that trial? Oh man, you know, being the father of two and being divorced, that was one heck of a trial. You know, and, and that's a, and it's a lot of that going on in society. You know, we have these families and children, and then all of a sudden the family is broken up. So that's that's quite a trial when you when you love the woman and you love your children and you want them to grow up under your roof. You know, divorce can be it's like a death. It's like death. <laughs> it's like a funeral, a long funeral until you adjust to the um, the fact that that's what it is. So that that was a significant trial. And, and when you're a man and you get in a situation where you go through a divorce, you lose half of what you got. <laughs> that's real. That's real mm. talk. You know, and then and then and then your children are not there, so you have to readjust. You know, so then you have to take care of two households when you were only prepared to take care of one. You got to take care of yourself, and you got to take care of your children when they stay with their mother. And then you have to get used to that bond being broken between the mother and the children because you know they're gonna be away from you for some time until everything gets fixed. But after you overcome that trial, my ex-wife today. Uh, we we are very good friends. We're very close. But you realize you got to raise, you still got to raise these children. You got to raise these children together. So we we are good friends to this very day, you know. So, but that that was a severe trial. Another one. I, mean, I had quite a few trials in life, brother. And uh, and what we have to understand is that trials are very necessary. You know, it it shows us who and what we are as a human being, who and what we are as a man or a woman. Trials are necessary, and if we shrink from it or run away from the trial, then like the minister said in our study guides, and those study guides are on point, bro. That's right. Everything that he's wrote in those study guides, those study guides are right and exact. When you run away from the pain, you never evolve to become the man or woman you're destined to be. You got to face the pain, overcome it. You know, And when you do that, you become a stronger and stronger man or woman because you know now that the God is actually working in you and through you to empower you to become just like him. Pain is very necessary. So I embrace it. You know, I've had pains in, in, in my relationship. I've had pain in business. You have pain in life in general, but you just have to go through it. You know, and, and once you face it and overcome the difficulty of factor attached to just living your life, you will, you will become a stronger and better man or woman, which will give you the courage to face all the other challenges in your life. So I don't have, I don't, you know, I, I, I see myself as pretty fearless, but not mm -hmm. because I am fearless. I have so much faith in Master Far Muhammad and the exalted Christ, the most honored Elijah Muhammad and the minister and his word that these two men are alive and well and in power. I believe that. I believe that. So when I move in society, when I move in my life, I move based on those principles alone. And that gives me the courage to face anything or any challenge that comes before me. And I face it like a man, face it like a warrior. Live or die, I'm gonna stand on that square. Powerful, yes, sir. Go ahead, Brother Craig. And people show you love all across the country. Um, Sister Anita Rose says, I'm liking from her and her husband, Brother Kennard. Like <laughs> Salam, and thank you everyone who's watching. We can't wait to put this on YouTube. Um, shout out to uh, our sister Auntie and the brother, um, uh, all of Brother Kente, as well as Brother 
uh, all our brothers from New York, from to LA, uh, shout out to you, Brother Musa, they always show love on YouTube as well. My next question is, what's been your greatest joy? Having my children. <laughs> seeing, seeing my children, man, and, and watching them, I mean, watching the birth of my children. I actually was there watching them, you know, and, and man, that, that is something to see. You know, you would think that it's like, oh, look, oh. nah, bro, that's a beautiful sight seeing life come through the womb of the woman that you put the seed in and, and you see your babies come out of that. I was like overjoyed, man. You know, got tears running down my eyes, looking at them babies, holding them and watching them look up at me when they opened their eyes because my children came out with their eyes open, <laughs> ready, you know, and it was a beautiful sight to see that brother. And it brought so much peace and joy to my heart and to my soul to see new life that you are responsible for, you got to take care of. I mean, that's that's one of the greatest joys of my life is to see my children born and now watching them grow up and now they're grown and my daughter has her own family. You know, she has a husband and four children. So I got four grandchildren. You know, my son is is, is engaged and with his fiance and they, I'm pretty sure soon they'll be having children of their own as well. So just watching them grow up and, and, and striving hard to try to leave this world a better place for them than I found it. And that's one of the things that I know your father, let me say something, let me, let me, let me, let me say this for a minute, brother. Your father and the brothers in DC, particularly the dope busters, brother Najmer, brother Nadar, brother Ernest, brother Daryl, brother Aaron. Man, when I was a young FOI coming into the nation in Columbia, South Carolina, and we used to go to DC with brother Amin and brother Curtis, and watching the fruit there. Man, just watching those brothers there and how your father trained those men so inspired me as a young man. I said, man, hell, if, if there ain't no organization for me, for men like the Nation of Islam and the FOI, brother, like the FOI, therefore, there's, there's no comparison to that. You know, that kind of brotherhood, that kind of fearlessness, those the warrior, the way we walk, the way we talk, they so inspired me, brother. I, I just wanted to be a reflection of what I saw in those brothers, you know? So your father, man, had, an, had a great influence on my life, him and Dr. Lean, just listening to the way Dr. Lean used to teach like he was fighting on the roster. <laughs> I love it, man. That brother, him and brother Colin would teach like they was going to war on the roster. You know, they represented the spirit of the minister at that time so exquisitely excellent. And then your father just took the word that the men were taught and he made bonds and brotherhood amongst the men. And they went out, man, the dope busters, brother. The brothers were so fearless. I was just glad to be amongst them. But I used to come up there to Mayfair Mansion too, me and brother Carlito Muhammad, who, who does the uh, 19th element with Dr. Lee. He came mm -hmm. up in, in Columbia Mosque. Brother, we used to come up, we used to go to D.C. and just rock it with the brothers, man. Just being around your father and the brothers from D.C. really uh, cemented what an FOI is in me by watching their example, you know, and, and, and all that. I'm sure it did that for all of us in Columbia. And when Brother Aaron came down from, from uh, Chicago, I mean, Columbia, we took off like a rocket ship. We was one of the we, we was one of the fastest growing mosques in the nation at the time. But Aaron and Abner were here, and uh, mm. that's when we took off in Columbia. We became the district headquarters for South mm. and North Carolina, you know. So, and your father eventually uh, had me go to Wilmington, North Carolina, to become a captain there, and uh, we became the most improved mosque uh, study group in the district at that time. And then I was moved to, uh, I, I used to live in Myrtle Beach. I used to drive back and forth two and a half hours from Myrtle Beach to Columbia, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, <laughs> while mm. I'm working for UPS at the time, working 10 to 12 hours a day. But that's what, that's what we did back then, bro. We had to do it, we did it. And then I was moved to Georgetown, uh, to go to Georgetown to become the student minister there under Brother Iris when he became the regional minister. And that we got the, we did so well down there. We in Georgetown, a population of about 10,000 people, we was number seven in the final call for a month. Mm. <laughs> Among all these major cities, we was number seven in the final mm. call for a month. I think we were selling at that time five to 7,000 papers a week. Mm. For a little country town like that, brother, that's a heck of a lot. And the bigger cities were falling off. 
But we, we stepped in there, man. We was number seven in the, in the final call when they used to do the top 10. So I think we made top five, one issue. But yeah, brother, we, we uh, back then, I owe a lot to your dad. And a lot to brother Akil, a lot to brother Curtis, brother Mean, Dr. Lean, brother Dadar, brother Najma, brother Ernest, brother Aaron, brother Daryl, the DI. When I saw that brother the first time drilling the men, I said, damn. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, man. Look at these brothers and how they move it. You know, so I was in ROTC in college, so I was already militarily inclined because I was going to go in the military. Matter of fact, I signed the contract going into my junior year to do just that. And I went to advanced camp going into my senior year, but I re-injured my knee at advanced camp. So I was going to go in the military. I was going to be, you know, I was, I was slotted to go to airborne school and all that, bro. But I heard the minister teach about the CIA and the wars that they fought and overthrowing governments all over the world. I said, shit, I can't do that. <laughs> I'm not going to be used like that. So after my knee injury, I just got an honorable discharge. I didn't want to try to go back after that. After hearing the minister teach like that, I said, man, I can't go fight for something like that. So I was already militarily inclined. So just seeing the fruit and how they were moving, I said, well, hell, I'm just going to get with this military and try to help and grow and evolve it. So, um, man, I just wanted to take that moment to speak on that because your dad affected a lot of people, knowingly or unknowingly, whether he knows it or not. I want him to know that he had a direct impact on my life and so many other brothers that I know of. So, um, so brother, you come from good stock, you and your brother and your sisters, you know, your mom, she was a warrior herself. You know? So I grew up watching them, brother, and studying them. I remember you when you was about two or three years old when he came down to Charleston to help Brother Ernest, because Brother Ernest was uh, appointed as a, as, a, as a student minister in Charleston, South Carolina. And y'all came uh -huh. down to help him out a little bit. And uh, when Brother Ernest got to Charleston, I had about 20 soldiers from Myrtle Beach and Conway ready to go help. <laughs> so we were, we were uh, back in those days, brother, we moved as one, and as brotherhood, and we all really had a tight bond with each other. You know, if your dad told us to go and knock down a damn tree, we would have done that. We were just mm -hmm. that, some, you know, we were just that obedient to his instruction. And the way he handled the men was beautiful, you know. And um, I just love those days as, you know, kind of having what, what they call that nostalgia. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. On that. Yeah, those, those were beautiful days, man. I, I would recommend that any young man become a part of the FOI, brother. An older man, for that matter. I think that this nation, we haven't even begun to reach our potential. You know, we haven't even begun. We're nowhere near it right now. But I think that going into this next decade, we're going to we're going to bloom and blossom and become so powerful that the world will bear witness that the most honored Elijah Muhammad is the great Mahdi, that the minister is the Messiah who is drawing into the power and the mind of the Christ to execute judgment. And they both are back by the supreme being, Master Far Muhammad. We, we don't have nothing to be ashamed of. We don't have to walk away from nothing. We have to face it, brother. We the next world rulers and we need to move like that. We don't have to fear a damn thing on this planet or no one and nobody because we got the power that backs us. They talk, everybody talking about the wheels now, as you can see. Yes, they sir. are real. The wheels are real. And there is power on that. I don't know if y'all read Brother Ilya Rashad's book, but get it. In that book, he mentioned that some guy who said he was a, a, a top security clearance person saw a cigar-shaped UFO land at an Air Force base. And out of that cigar shape came men, young men. And he said they looked like they were Af they looked like African Americans. <laughs> That's what he said. And he said they had a look on their face as if they had never been conquered. Man, that reminded me of the FOI. <laughs> Fearless young men with a look on our face like we have never been conquered. Wow. So what we see down here is up there. We got soldiers up there too. So when they talk about killing us or destroying us, man, they're going to get their butt waxed. Because the God that we serve already has his army in place. We got an Air Force. Hell, we got a, we got a ground troops, too. We got SEALs, too. We got <laughs> air, land, and sea soldiers, too. We got submarines, too. Except the technology is greater. 
the soldiers are more well trained because that's all they do from day one in their life is train to take down the enemy. So we got backup, brother. When the minister tell us we got backup, believe it, we got it. So we don't have to fear a damn thing, brother. And when we all realize that it's FOI and MGT and we start loving each other like we should, then a damn person, a damn nation on this earth that will be able to handle us in the near future because we got the God and the Christ, the great Mahdi backing us. And I'm just excited, brother. I'm just glad to be on your show and get, thank you for giving me this opportunity. Man, thank you for the opportunity. You got me fired up. Yes, sir. And, and I also, I didn't get to say happy Father's Day earlier and happy Father's Day to all the, the brothers who are watching and people are showing love all across the country to you. Uh, man, we're crazy teaching. That's Sister Maya Abdul Rahman is saying, Assalamu alaikum salam. And I wanted to, uh, man, you got me ready to uh, drill right now. Okay. <laughs> but, but I, yes, I sir. You're a master driller, brother. Yeah, you master driller. So you took over with brother Darren left off. <laughs> praise be so loud. And, and I'm, uh, I hear his son in law, uh, with my, you know, he, his son married my sister. And wow. I got to uh, make sure I uh, share this. Yeah, his son married my sister. Um, I, want, I wanted to ask you about what, what type of music do you like to listen to, sir? All genres. I like I like some. I don't I don't listen to that drill music too much, you know. <laughs> yes, sir. But the beats, the beats are tight. But I like R and B. You know, I like I like some of the rap out there. I used to love the positive rap that we used to listen to back in the day, man. With Public Enemy, KRS One, Tribe Called Quest. You know, all those cats back in the day, man. Uh, they really were putting out a message that fueled our revolution back then. You know, they will had minister clips of the ministers sprayed in the songs. And so you would hear a nice beat and then you hear Minister Farrakhan voice behind it. You're like, whoa, you know? So everybody was rocking to that back then. You know, everybody knew who Minister Farrakhan because he was in the music. Everybody heard mm. clips. If you, you might not know who that was. You said, well, who is that? Oh, that's Minister Farrakhan, that's Farrakhan? Make you go get a tape. Who is that? Oh, that's Brother Colin. That's Colin. Make you go get a tape, <laughs> you know? So, you know, who is that? Uh, Aline got to Brother back then. The, the music was a part of our cultural experience because back then the cultural experience was positive. You know, the songs headed for self-destruction. Man, that, that those songs, brother, kept us from really going off the deep end. Right now, these young brothers don't have nothing they're listening to that can keep them from going off the deep end, you know? Uh, the black man is a warrior by nature. So if somebody feels like they're disrespected, he gonna fight. So we don't stop to think, that's my brother, you know, he might have an issue, he might have a bad day, you know, sense of throwing no blows. Or, but back then we would fight, but we wouldn't try to kill each other. <laughs> but nowadays, young people, man, they don't, they don't even fight no more. Get in an argument, pull out your gun, shoot and kill. So I like all kinds of music, but mostly the positive music. Uh, I like Michael, love Michael Jackson. That was my favorite artist. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I, I didn't hear you me. say I didn't hear you say anything about Atomic Dog. I thought that was like mandatory that y'all had to like that. It's like, well, bro, that, that's just that's just what it is. <laughs> Don't even try it, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I just thought y'all had. I thought that was like mandatory. Like oh, yeah. every person that I ever met, it's like, all right, Atomic Dog. Oh, yeah. like, all, all, of us, all of us like that. We, we love that. We give George Clinton big props for that. <laughs> Praise be to a lot. Yes, sir. Well, brother, I, used, Craig, I used to be a show dog back in college, brother Josh. I used to be the I show know dog. That. I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I used to be a show dog. I had to stop though when I when I joined the FOI. I couldn't couldn't be a show dog no more. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, what would you like your legacy to be, Brother Craig? That I tried to serve our people, brother. That's that's the only thing I'm I'm just trying to be a better servant, you know, I'm trying to be a better father, better servant, better brother, better man. You know, I just want to be a good servant to our people, bro. And somebody who's courageous enough to stand with the minister in a way that represents his way. You know, I try to reflect him as best I can to the people uh, and, uh, and be fearless in the face of, of adversity, be fearless in the face of those who try to project fear. Um, I thank Allah for allowing me to be in South Carolina in this dispensation of time. Yes, sir. Because here, in, in this place here, our people have had a tendency in the past to be afraid to confront the evil forces of racism and white supremacy. And so what I try to do is when that opportunity arises, confront it and face it and give our people a demonstration of how to overcome it. 
and not be afraid of it, you know, and, and have them to know and believe and understand that they have the power within them and outside of them that will protect them if they do. And it's cost me a lot. It's cost me some, it's cost me some, it's, I've suffered some privation because of it, but it doesn't mean the damn thing, brother, if you're not willing to live your life for a cause greater than yourself. And so I've, I've made a commitment and I know I may die trying, but I'm, I'm going to stand on principles, whether I live or die, I'm going to stand on those principles. And I believe that Master Far Muhammad is here to back us as a people, but we have to trust him. The minister said we have to try him. So I try him. <laughs> you know, I'll stand in the face of some of the most powerful people in this state and say what needs to be said to their face, not because I'm so bad, but I believe that the God and the great Mahdi, who now is the most honored Elijah Muhammad, has our back. If we just go ahead and stand, we don't have to wait for the minister. The minister already gave us the word, brother. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Do, we got to do it. Whether we are functioning in the mosque or outside of the mosque, because a lot of us in the nation, they may not be in the mosque, may not be, may not be active, but we're still in the nation. That's right. That doesn't preclude us from stopping doing this work because you're not functioning in the mosque. You've been given that word. You've been given the knowledge. You've been given the wisdom and understanding. So empower yourself to go out here and stand up for your people. Fearlessly. And if we do that, man, we'll be successful. Well, it's all going to come back together. We family. So whether we in active or not, or active or inactive, get active in the damn community and make your presence felt. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. And on behalf of myself, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast, we want to thank you, Brother Craig, for your sacrifices and the sacrifices of your family as well to help establish Islam here in North America, um, especially in South Carolina. I didn't even know we was down there like that, you know. So, so may Allah bless you for holding it down in South Carolina. Yes, sir. I didn't even know that. Okay. You know, I didn't know. Well, your, your father, the Dr. Lean, Brother Collett, they were here almost every. They were here every month, <laughs> mm -hmm. brother. We were very, we were, very, we was kicking it in the late eighties and the nineties to mid nineties. We were, we were, we were pushing it down here. South Carolina was strong. It is falling off like we've had some falling off everywhere, but but uh, the nation was strong here. You know, and, and we can still do that again. Yeah. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. <laughs> but this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off of the People's Podcast. Asalaamu Alaikum, sir. Wa Alaikum Salaam. Yes, sir. And thank you for thank everyone for watching. Well, Craig, I I, I got to uh, I'm gonna call you offline, but I, we gotta we gotta break bread so I, I can learn more. Okay, brother. All right. Yes, sir. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Salaam.